Like the frost on a rose Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature acquaints us With the nature of patience Like a seed in the snow The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And with the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Friends, we gather because of the, what God has done in our world in sending us the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be singing about him. We're going to be hearing about him as Steve shares about the joy that comes from Jesus. We're going to sing first up, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Uh, thinking about Emmanuel, God with us, the one who has come into our world. So let's stand and sing. I understand we need to wear masks, but there's no restriction on singing. So let's stand and sing together. i mm -hmm. 
for the next song. Continued both day and night 
Sounded like some kind of weird wind coming through, didn't it, that one? Uh, friends, welcome. Let me introduce myself. My name's Chris Braga. I'm the Senior Minister of the Church here. Welcome. It's great to have you with us uh, this evening. Now, uh, to my left is a jar of snakes. Who spotted that jar of snakes? Oh, okay, yeah, a few people spotted that jar of snakes. Now, someone did an adult bring the two children down the front here. I'm sure someone did. That's good. Because a bit later in the service, we have an opportunity to have a chat with a few people around, meet some people around, but also guess the number of snakes in the jar. Okay, so you can start counting now. Uh, but we're going to be doing that a little bit later and a few other things. Uh, so just heads up that that's on the radar. But one of the things we do is we come before God. We know that he hears our prayers. And so Pete's going to come and lead us in prayer uh, for our world. And then Sue's going to come and bring us one of our Bible readings from Isaiah chapter 11. Uh, so over to Pete. Please join me as we pray together. Uh, Father God, we just thank you so much for this wonderful time of year. Uh, the time of year full of celebration, full of joy, uh, full of meeting together with family and friends uh, and lots of lots of wonderful things. Uh, Father, we pray for uh, each of us as we look forward to the days ahead, uh, that the meetings we'll have or might have already had with family, with friends, uh, the joy it is to gather with each other, enjoy each other's presence uh, and enjoy the time together. Uh, Father, I just pray that that time will be full uh, of goodness, uh, full of uh, relaxation, uh, full of connect, reconnecting with people. Uh, but, uh, we also pray for uh, safety amongst all that as well. I pray for those who are unable to meet up with family and friends due to sickness or distance or any other restrictions or barriers that are in the way of us meeting together with family and loved ones. Uh, Father, I just pray for us as we go through uh, those navigations and pray that we'll be able to uh, go through this time uh, with a good outlook and we'll be able to enjoy, uh, enjoy that time we have together. I pray for our safety as we travel, as we move around, as we uh, go to different houses and different places. Actually, in the, kind of the wake of what's happened the last few days, we pray for our safety in health as well, uh, as uh, new restrictions are coming in and um, yeah, the, the threat of COVID is on the rise again, Father. We just pray for our health and safety amongst all of that, uh, and that our, each of us here, our family, our friends, our loved ones, and our community, we've got to stay safe uh, and stay healthy throughout this time. Uh, Father, we also pray for those beach missions uh, who have been affected by the recent uh, restrictions. Uh, some have been cancelled, which is uh, a huge sadness. Uh, for the teams who have prepared so well over this year uh, to be able to go and spread your word into communities uh, up and down the coast of New South Wales and beyond. Uh, we pray for those teams as they, as they deal with the disappointment of this, uh, but we pray that they would still be able to uh, pray for those people that they know there uh, and look forward to a time in the future when they can go and share your word with those communities. Uh, Father, we do pray for those missions who are going ahead. Uh, they will be able to go and be safe as they do that. Uh, they will be able to take your message of salvation to the people they see there, to uh, locals of the area, to uh, people who are travelling in for holidays. Uh, people would 
hear about you, know you, come to faith in you uh, and serve you with their lives. Um, and Father, we pray that our family, our friends, our community and the world around us would know you and your son, Jesus, because of this Christmas time. I pray that through uh, things like church services, uh, through conversations with each other, through things on the TV and advertising, uh, that your message of Jesus' birth would go out into this world and that people wouldn't just think that it's a, another little element of Christmas in amongst all the other wonderful things, but understand that you, this birth of your son, Jesus, is the central message of Christmas. And Father, we pray that people would understand that he is the son of God and that he has come to save us. And we give you great thanks that Jesus' light has come into this world and because of him, we can know God. And we pray this in his son's, in your son's name. Amen. As I said, Sue's going to come read the Bible. So please, if you have a Bible in front of you, you can grab it out. Uh, all the words will be on the screen as well. Hi. Uh, tonight's first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy and with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I thought I'd just do a little survey to find out if I'm weird or not because this is how I find, I'm finding Christmas so far. A little bit stressful, right? I thought it would be relaxing. It's meant to be joyful, easy time of year, very nice, but we've been busy in the shops, we've been getting meals ready, we've been preparing the backyard, we've been, it just doesn't stop, right? And the way I'm feeling, we're meant to feel joyful and relaxed, but I'm feeling stressed. Who else is feeling stressed? Anyone else feel this time of year is a little bit stressful at times? Yeah, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. It can be very stressful. Let me tell you why it is stressful if you're an average Australian. Because so far this year, at the shops, you have spent $24 billion. <laughs> Give yourselves a little clap. That's very good, isn't it? You have also, you have bought... 34 million stuffed toys so far. No wonder you haven't got any room in the house, right? It's, it's, it, that's a lot of toys. And you have sent 150 million Christmas cards. Who reckons they've sent about half of them? They, they just keep writing them and writing them and writing them and writing them and receiving them and writing them, yeah. And so far, you have used 153,000 metres of wrapping paper. That goes around the earth four times. No wonder you haven't got any time for anything else. You're just spending the whole time wrapping presents, right? It takes a long time. Who hasn't wrapped their presents yet? You better hurry up. You've got about four hours before Christmas. <laughs> Not three hours. Not even. You're going to be pushing it. Christmas can be stressful, but you know what? It's not meant to be. It's meant to be a time of joy. It's meant to be a time of fun. It's meant to be a joyful experience. 
and and we know that because that's what the first Christmas was like. And you know, when you look at the Christmas carols, many of them are about joy. A lot of them are about, especially one of them. It's all about joy, called Joy to the World. And I I, I thought, oh, there's a joyful one. I thought I think I'll focus on that this time, uh, this year, and 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 see why we should be joyful, what it means to be joyful, and how we can be more joyful as Christian people. Okay, so joy to the world. And the first stanza, I don't know if it's going to come up anywhere, the first stanza is about joy to the world because the Saviour is come. It sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Bad grammar and all that, but just remember it was written 200 years ago. The Saviour is come. So you're clever and you can just translate, the Saviour has come. The Saviour, the, the Lord has come. That's why we should rejoice. And to understand why, we need a little bit of history. Some people don't like history, don't worry. This is a very short history lesson. First of all, by the time Jesus came, God's people had been doing it tough for about a 1,000 years. God's prophet had promised them a special rescuer would come and help. And by the time Jesus came, they'd been waiting a 1,000 years by that stage. Okay, that, 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 that's the period of history. And then Christ arrived. And when they saw the baby in Bethlehem, they all said, this is the one. His, his parents said, God has heard us. The angels said, glory in the highest because of this baby. The apostles said, he is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God has come to us in this person, in this baby, Jesus. And the priest said, at the temple said, this is the one, this is the saviour. This is him. This is the saviour of the world. In other words, they were like one big chorus all saying, this is the Lord. The Lord has come. This is the one we've been waiting for. And it, 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 it's great when something finally comes, something you've been waiting for, okay? And that's why people like Christmas so much, because by this, by the end of the year, we've all been waiting for holidays. Put up your hand, I'll do a little survey here. Who thinks that's the best part of Christmas? You've been waiting for holidays to come. Who thinks it's the presents? Been waiting for the presents to come. Who thinks it's later in Christmas Day when they can, you know, after the lunch, they can get to sleep? Who thinks sleep's the best part of Christmas? We finally get some rest, right? I'm with you. I like that part as well. But the arrival of Christ is much better than all those things coming. When, when, when the Lord has come, it's really good because God has come to shine his face upon us and to bless us. Okay? That's what we are celebrating. That's why it's so good. And the reason and the person of Jesus Christ and, 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 and what that blessing means to us is what the rest of the carol goes on to talk about and we're going to be explaining that in a minute because I'm doing three talks. This, that's just the first bit of the talk, okay? So I'm going to do three little talks so that we don't fall asleep. Isn't that good? Yeah? Can't fall asleep in a three-minute talk. Who thinks they can? Don't try it. Okay. Next song. Does everyone want to stand and sing? See 
said we're going to take a little break which means we can kill that flashing light as well um now uh during this break there's going to be like a little timer going but uh see if you can meet someone who doesn't live under your roof okay just say hello to someone doesn't live under your roof uh introduce yourself say hello um uh, keep your mask on and stuff but now during the break also is the opportunity to guess the number of snakes in the jar now here's, here's the way it's going to work at the end of tonight, I'm going to ring someone. And I'm going to ring the person who has guessed closest to the number of snakes. And the re how I'm going to get your phone number is like this. You're going to text your guess to this phone number up here. Can you see it there? 0423, is that right? Here we go, I'll just read it off here. 042, it's not my phone number. That'd be a worry if I didn't know it. 0423 460 678. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to have to come and get the snakes from me. Does that make sense? 
So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep ringing people until we actually get someone rings in the room. So actually, if you're on YouTube, you're going to miss out. Okay, so that's the deal. So what you can do is you're going to chat to someone, have a guess at the number of snakes, even talk to the other person, have a bit of a chat about the number of snakes. You can both have a guess. And if you're a kid and don't have a phone, talk to your folks, text that number. That's Pete Ray's phone number, just out of interest. And then he's going to tell me who's closest and your phone number, because you texted him, right? Okay, you've given him your phone number, and then I'm going to call you later on. So put the timer on, say hello to someone on your household, have a chat about how many snakes there are, say hello, and the music will play. Over to you guys. Now I think, have you got the phone number? <laughs> Can we put the timer on as well? Awesome.
trustee. Okay, friends, uh, grab a seat and you can continue those conversations on. I'll hear from, I'll hear from Pete how the guessing has gone. Um, if you guessed, guessed a million snakes or something right, that's probably the whole of Australia, do you know what I mean? So, like, in line with what Steve was saying, just, uh, but just this jar of snakes, not the whole of Australia. Um, so, uh, now we're going to hear from Steve in a moment, but I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2 and then we'll hear Steve's next bit about joy to the world. So in those days, Caesar Augustus, this is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Joy to the world. Well, we've looked at that why uh, we should rejoice, and that's got to do with the fact that the Lord has come. The Lord has come. Okay, but what does it mean for the Lord to come? That's what we're looking at now. What does it mean for the Lord has come? That's in the second stanza, and we see he comes to reign. Rejoice, rejoice, joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Now, that's a funny thing to say about a little boy, isn't it? When a boy is born, look at the boy and say, the saviour reigns. Why would you say that? I mean, he's just another boy at one level. A thousand babies were born every year in uh, Bethlehem. And so this kid, he's going to need feeding, right? He's going to need nappy changing. Uh, is there anything else with babies? Nappy changing, feeding, is that about it? Yeah. So he's going to need those things. He's going to need those two essentials. And uh, he's just a normal boy at one level, but... At another level, he's not a normal boy. There's a lot more to this boy than just that. Jesus was special. And to get, to get why he's special or how he's special, I'm going to introduce you to my word for the Christmas season. This is, I don't think you would have heard this word, okay? The, the new word, this is my word for this month, it is proleptic, okay? Let's see, can you say it? Kids, say it after me, proleptic. Well done. And now I'm going to spell it. And anyone who can come to me afterwards who's under 10 years and old and spell it properly will get a Christmas pudding. <laughs> P-R-O-L-E-P-T-I-C. Not prophetic, proleptic. Not septic, but proleptic. That's my word for the year. I reckon it's pretty good because most people haven't heard about it. And I can say, well, that's my word for the year, my word for the season. And proleptic just means giving someone a title before they've really earned it, you know. When Prince William was born, they looked at him and they said, king, the king, the king is born. Well, how can they say that? They're using proleptic language. What they mean is they're giving the title to him before he's really earned the title, before he's come into his kingship. One day William will probably be king, right, um, after Charles. Most probably that's going to happen, and, but not yet. That's proleptic use of language. And that's, what they, that's how they were talking about Jesus. They looked at Jesus and they said, the Saviour reigns. Well, he's only a baby. How can you say that? It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. And because the Lord is involved, because this is God's business, which nobody can stop, it will definitely happen. 
the Saviour will reign. When Jesus was born, they knew the king, the future king, had come. Jesus is God's king. Like Hebrews chapter 5 verse 6 says, you are a priest forever, meaning you will reign forever. Not just for a little while. Most priests, they serve for a while. Most kings, they serve for a while. But this guy, this Jesus will come and he will be a king forever. Why? Because of his life. Here's three fun facts about Jesus. First of all, here's a little summary of the Christmas story. He lived a perfect life. He died a special death. And he rose to live forever. And therefore he's going to reign forever and ever. He's not going to just reign for a little while like most kings. He will reign forever and ever and ever. That's not all. He will reign as a perfect king, a good king. Not like a lot of kings, when they come into their power, something happens to them, don't they? They sort of change. They sort of become selfish. They sort of take advantage of their kingship, their reign, and they make use of the people, but not this king. That's why we want him to live forever and to reign forever. He's going to do good to the people. He's going to bless the people. He's going to enrich their lives and make sure that they prosper because he's such a good king. And how they will prosper is what the carol goes on to talk about in the next stanza, which we're going to do and come to in a minute in my third part of my talk. But we're going to sing it now, aren't we? No? We're not going to sing it now. Why can't we sing it now? I want to sing it right now. Okay, we'll sing whatever you want to sing. We'll let Chris have his way. Please stand and join us as we sing. Can we just get the next slides, please? Next one. Next one. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the right one. Oh, the hallowed angels sing 
Take a seat. Our second reading tonight, or our third reading actually, tonight comes from Matthew chapter 2, starting at verse 1 to verse 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Okay, joy to the world. We looked at why, because the Lord is come. We looked at what, okay, because the Saviour reigns. But how does he reign? I mean, it's one thing to say the Saviour reigns, but what sort of reign does he have? Not all reigners, not all kings, not all rulers are very, very good. You know, whether it's politicians or or government heads or captains of industry, they don't always rule in the nicest way, the most truthful way, right? But Jesus reigns this verse says the third verse of this song this carol he reigns with truth and grace think about it, truth and grace wouldn't that be great to have a leader who only ever speaks the truth who only ever conveys the truth everything he does is truthful you're talking about jesus there that's exactly what he is like true he's a man of truth you know when he was on the cross peter spoke of him and said no deceit was in his mouth even when they were hurling their insults at him when he was on the cross he did not retaliate he did not swear back at them he did not bite back at them that's the sort of man he is he could control his tongue but not only is he truthful he's also gracious he's a man of grace that'd be nice to have from people wouldn't it because we all operate on the basis of 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 merit of of what people deserve we give people what they have earned not jesus He gives people what they haven't earned, his love. He's that kind of God. He's generous. See, we don't deserve anything good from God, really, because of the way we've treated him. Because we're not people of truth. We haven't always been truthful, have we? We, 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 You know, we've we've told lies, we've been deceitful, but, but God says, I'm willing to forgive on the basis of what Jesus did. And Jesus says, I'm willing to accept you. That's grace, isn't it? Grace is a beautiful thing. Don't you love getting something for nothing? Isn't it fantastic? You know, there's a store in Penrith who was giving and offering people free wrapping. You could come out the store with your gifts and they'll wrap it for you for nothing. And there was a long queue. There wasn't one lady in the queue, it was all men. I don't know why. I don't get that. I'm not sure 
completely why that is, but it was all men in the queue. Maybe it's because they can't rap. But anyway, there it is. We love getting things for nothing, and Jesus gives us forgiveness for nothing. Well, I reckon that's just great. He's a man of truth. He's a man of grace. The Saviour reigns, but he, he reigns, look at how he reigns, with truth and grace. We don't deserve God's grace, but he gives it to us anyway. That's why we should rejoice. Although at Christmas time, you know, we don't always feel like rejoicing. I know it's stressful, and uh, the most stressful part hasn't come yet, you know. Do you know this year, in terms of Christmas trees, we have put up three million Christmas trees. Wow, that's a lot of tinsel, isn't it, eh? Isn't that a lot of tinsel? That's not the worst part. You've got to take them down yet, right? That's the hardest part, getting them down and then cleaning up the mess afterwards and getting them in that little box, which they never seem to fit back in, do they? I don't know what it is. And uh, still, tomorrow, we're going to cook 24.4 million meals. That's what you're going to do. And we're going to eat them. But that's not the nice part. The bad part is we've got to clean up afterwards, right? We're, there's all this cleaning up after the Christmas trees and after the meals. No wonder we're stressed, but we should rejoice. We've got so much to rejoice in. Joy to the world. The Lord is come, the Saviour reigns, and the third stanza in this song, which I hope we're going to see, the third stanza in this song is that he reigns with truth and grace. Isn't that wonderful? That's why we should rejoice. There's other things to rejoice in at Christmas time. You know, we like the food, that's good, and we like the holidays, and we like the warmth of summer, and they're all good, but this is the best thing. Jesus has come to die on the cross, to rise again, to reign with truth and grace. So what should we do about it? Well, he reigns with truth and grace. Let the earth receive her king. That's what the next line is in the stanza. Let the earth receive a king, receive Jesus. And we've got to ask ourselves this Christmas, have we done that? Have we received him as king, accepted him as our king, allowed him to be king over our lives? Dear God, we thank you for Jesus, the one who came, lived, died, rose, and lives forever. May he be king over us forevermore. Amen. Hey, Greg. <laughs> you were the last person to guess, I think, and you got the right number. 67. Okay, congratulations to Greg. Come down. Here we go. I, I think it's all those years of kind of like, you know, how many ramset bolts are in the container, how many, you know, all, all those building things. Well done. Uh, 67 was the right answer. Someone got 66. Who got 66? Someone got 66, they guess 66. Anyway, but on, on, the, on the money, uh, so 67. Well done. Uh, George, I'm sorry, almost. If I'd, oh, okay. if I'd eaten one out of it, that person would have won. Okay. Um, now, friends, we're going to uh, do what's touching base now. So we love to hear your feedback, any prayer requests, any comments. And you guys know how to use a QR code. You guys know how to use a QR code, so you can... Uh, do that. Now, if you don't have a device and you want to just fill one of these in, Pete Ray's up the back. He's going to bring you a pencil or a, uh, and a paper version. Um, it's an opportunity just to uh, share with Steve any feedback from Steve, any questions for Steve from the message, uh, and anything at all you want to pass on to the staff team. And just raise your hand if you want Pete to come round with one. Uh, now, guess what we're going to do after this? Any guesses?
we're going to sing, keep the music going, we're going to uh, sing Joy to the World. So that's the plan. So just in a moment, uh, the musos are going to come up. Finish writing those things in. If you want to tick one of the boxes, to find out more about Jesus, uh, looking for a church to be part of, uh, any, any prayer requests, anything there, just jot that down. You can also uh, say that you're here tonight at the Christmas Eve service as well. Just tick that box as well. Let us know you're here this evening. Uh, and then we're going to sing. Okay, guys, we've been thinking about Joy to the World. So let's stand and sing Joy to the World, Big Voices, last song. Let's encourage one another with what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Let's sing. Please take a seat. Well, friends, that brings this time to an end in a moment. Uh, we're going to head out towards uh, the backyard. The lights are all on out there, you might have noticed. You can head down either the staircase just before the Hub Cafe or right through the back over that way. It's probably going to be better for us to be outside, in fact, uh, just given all the things that are going on at the moment. And uh, there's going to be ice creams and stuff. Uh, but if you do want to hang in the cafe, you can do that too or hang in here. Uh, but, friends, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let me pray and then we'll head out. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening, the evening we can remember Jesus coming to the world, uh, your King who rules this world, who has died on the cross that we can be forgiven and have a relationship with you. And so, Father, we rejoice in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So feel free to hang. There's some ice creams and ice blocks and stuff. We'll distribute those. Uh, head outside. 
head out the back, wherever you want to go. But Merry Christmas. Uh, just to let you know, if you want to be around in the morning, there's different things happening in the morning, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and then we have one gathering for the whole parish, uh, Grace West, uh, Silverdown, Glenmore Park, uh, here on Sunday at 9.30. So have a very Merry Christmas and see you down the track.